saints, peace, grace, love of Christ Jesus be with all of you. I hope everybody had a great Resurrection Sunday celebration. Now, this video, like I talked about in the last video, is we'd be getting into the book of Acts. And I think it's extremely important. This video is our introduction of the introduction to the book of Acts. Okay, I'm just going to let you guys know where we're going in the next couple weeks, next couple months. How, however long it takes, we're going to take the time to get through this book. Now, this 28 chapter book is said to be one of the most difficult books in the Bible to understand. And I can agree and disagree with that statement. And let me explain. I agree that the book of Acts can be very difficult to understand if you don't rightly divide God's word. And if you don't understand anything about God's administrations or you don't understand how the Bible is written in the first place, you're going to have a hard time, a very difficult time going through the book of Acts. However, if you do take the time, if you do exactly what Paul tells us to do in 2 Timothy 2.15, the book of Acts is actually quite easy to understand. And Paul tells us very clearly in 2 Timothy 2.15, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. The simple definition for rightly dividing God's truth is asking who is speaking who is being spoken to, what administration or what, what dispensation is it taking place in. Those three things alone allow us to understand exactly what's going on in Scripture. And we know that God's truth is the entirety of the Bible, all 66 books, all of God's Word that's saved for us in this precious book that we call the King James Version Bible. So, in this presentation, we're going to do a basic overview of the book of Acts before we start our study. And Lord willing, over the next several weeks, months, however long it takes, we're going to be going chapter by chapter, verse by verse, trying to keep it short so everybody can take part in these studies, like I mentioned in the last video. Now, the book of Acts is extremely important to understand because it records the transition period between two important administrations or dispensations over a period of about 35 years. And Acts starts out with Peter and the rest of the apostles preaching the gospel of the kingdom. And it ends with Paul preaching the gospel of grace. And this happens over a period of 35 years. It's this transition from the kingdom that was promised to the 12 tribes, to the seed of Jacob, uh, to, to the mystery which was kept secret since before the foundation of the world that Jesus revealed to Paul on the road to Damascus and all throughout his career in the ministry. So we see this transition taking place over several decades. And it's this period of time between Peter's gospel and Paul's gospel that we need to understand if we're ever going to comprehend the difference between a dispensation of law slash kingdom versus the dispensation of grace. And not understanding this transition leads to all kinds of problems. And we see the result of not rightly dividing today when, when you look at certain denominations who place themselves inside something that's not meant for them. It's simply not their mail. Okay. And again, like I said in my last video, a lot of people try to make God's word conform to their beliefs. That's the wrong approach. What you need to do is make your beliefs conform to God's word. That's the right way to do it. And when a person today tries to place themselves in something that, you know, is just not meant for them or it is it is written to a specific group of people inside a certain period of time, then confusion is born and then we see all kinds of problems. This is why Paul said to rightly divide God's truth, knowing what part of God's word is for us today and what part is not for us today is the very foundation of what right division is all about. The book of Acts lays that foundation for us. It's a very important book. It's an overview of the transition between that which was for Israel to uh, over to the mystery given to our Apostle Paul that's for us today in this time period. Now, if you notice where the book of Acts is located, it stands between the Old Testament, the four Gospels, and Paul's 13 books. It's right in the middle. It's like a divider book, okay, that explains... The transition that takes place when Israel kills their, their prophet Stephen and then Jesus reveals the mystery gospel of grace to the Apostle Paul. And after Paul's books, Romans through Philemon, we see another shift of the gospels once again in Hebrews through Revelation. Now, when the rapture takes place, 
we see a shift from Paul's 13 books over to the end time books, Hebrews through Revelation. Again, two different dispensations for two different groups of people for two different time periods. We go from the four gospels, the dispensation of law slash kingdom, over to the dispensation of grace, uh, you know, the past 2,000 years. Then we see scripture go back to where God leaves off with Stephen. And we see a continuance of the gospel of the kingdom into Daniel's 70th week. The, the seven years of tribulation, as some people call it. Now, Israel's chart in front of us, okay, doesn't show our gospel. It doesn't show anything that happened with Paul. What this is showing in front of us is Peter and Stephen. And we see a one-year period between the ascension over to the apostle uh, the prophet Stephen when they stoned Stephen now remember what Stephen saw in the vision when he was speaking he saw Jesus standing ready to fulfill Daniel's 70th week there's a significant reason why Stephen said Jesus was standing and not sitting and we're gonna look at that in in the next couple weeks in our study now in this chart we see Stephen, if they would have accepted Stephen as a nation, as the nation of Israel, okay? Jacob's seed, the 12 tribes of Jacob or Israel, if they would have accepted the Holy Ghost speaking through their prophet Stephen and they would have repented and admitted that Jesus Christ was the prophesied Messiah, then they would have went straight into Daniel's 70th week. Why? Because Daniel's 70th week is a prophecy that was made before. These things have to be fulfilled, okay? They, they're not canceled. They need to be fulfilled. That's the whole purpose of prophecy. They come to fulfillment. So we see here on the chart in front of us again, we see Israel's program, what would have happened if they would have accepted what the Holy Spirit said through the prophet Stephen. They would have went through right into Daniel's 70th week. Now, that's important to understand because here's why. If we're looking at the time period between the ascension, the time period where Peter and the apostles are preaching the kingdom gospel, and the prophet Stephen preaching again the kingdom gospel, we're looking at the end days for them during that time period. See, these were the end days. The end days that you read about in Hebrews through Revelation, the book of Daniel, all the prophecies concerning the day of the Lord, that day, and so on, is speaking about the end days. So for them, back then, Peter, the apostles, the little flock, the disciples, all the believers back then, including the prophet Stephen, were in the end days. They were in those days. They were experiencing all the miracles of the Holy Spirit, the speaking of tongues, the gifts of healing, people coming back to life, and so far, so far uh, forth were, were, was happening during that period of time. Okay? But since they killed Stephen, something changed. All right? And we're going to be looking at that. So now we see a transition from Israel to the revelation giving, given to Paul by Jesus Christ, our gospel today. They, they killed Stephen, and then... God presses pause on their program, the end days program. He presses pause on that. And there's a 2,000 year period that we're in today known as the dispensation of grace. Paul, the apostle Paul, his whole gospel is about the dispensation of grace, the mystery program. So from the kingdom back, uh, the, the kingdom to grace back to the kingdom. Okay, it's really that simple. And to fulfill the promises made to the 12 tribes of Jacob, uh, or Israel, if you will. Now, let me interject here real quick. If you're new to right division, I highly suggest you first get the basic understanding of what right division is and what dispensations are. You have to get that understanding first in order to understand what we're about to study for the next couple of weeks, the next couple of months, however long it takes. I don't care if it takes the next couple of years or until the rapture happens. Amen. So I have several videos on my channel that explains right division, what it's all about, what the different administrations are, the dispensations uh, are in the Bible and so forth. And I highly suggest you watch those and get at least a general understanding of what these right division dispensations, what I'm, what I'm speaking about. Get, a, get an understanding of what that's all about and then come back to this study. Now, especially if you're new to right division, all you have to do. Uh, you know, if you wanted to get a better understanding of that, I started a Bible study program, a right division Bible study program. 
It's available through email. I have several people that are that are taking it right now. There's a lot of people taking this course. Everybody's having uh, a, a good time. Everybody's learning. Everybody's doing really well. And like I tell them, there's no way you can fail that program. There's no way you can fail the, the, the Bible study program that I have because that's not the objective. The objective is if you know more today than you did yesterday because of the Bible study program, then you're doing well. You're growing spiritually and that's the whole purpose, okay? And this is gonna come out at the judgment seat of Christ when you are judged based on what you did in the body of Christ based on the knowledge and what you did with Paul's gospel of grace. You're gonna be judged on that as part of it, all right? So if you're, if you're using the, uh, for example, if you're using the new versions of the Bible, then you probably have never heard of the word dispensations. That's because it's only found in the King James Version Bible. There's, there's a lot of people out there that say, you know what, this word dispensation, uh, it was made up. Well, that's not true. It, it was made up when the King James Version Bible was w w came out and before that because Paul is the one that used the word dispensations. He uses it four times throughout his books, Romans through Philemon. Paul uses the dispensation, the word dispensations, and, uh, you know, the the... The general, uh, what's the word for it? The, the general definition of the word dispensations, administrations, and period of time, and so forth. He uses it four times in his books to explain those administrations throughout time that God uh, has used to separate how he, he was dealing with mankind over 6,000 years ago, how he dealt with Adam, how he dealt with Noah, how he dealt with Moses, how he dealt with the apostles how he deals with Paul how he's gonna deal with people in the future these are all different administrations dispensations okay so it's important to first get an understanding what right division is according to 2 Timothy 2 15 first of all then the transition that we see in the book of Acts is is all gonna come together like a big puzzle everything is gonna suddenly make sense you're gonna be able to see the big picture if you will and you're gonna understand what God is doing with Israel, what he did with Israel, with the body of Christ, and also his plans for the future. Eschatology, okay? So, who wrote the book of Acts? That's the first thing. Well, the same Luke of the Gospel of Luke is the same person that writes the book of Acts. And how do we know that? There's two things that stand out in the book of Acts that most theologians say point directly to the physician named Luke. And the first thing is the person that's addressed in the in both books in Luke and in Acts the Gospel of Luke and in the, the book of Acts Luke addresses one Theophilus if you read Luke 1 in verse 3 it says it seemed good to me also having had perfect understanding of all things from the very first to write unto thee in order most excellent Theophilus that thou mightest know the certainty of those things wherein thou hast been instructed instructed in Acts one verse one Luke writes again the fur the former treaties have I made O Theophilus of all that Jesus began both to do and teach so we see here in verse one it says the former treaties have I made here he's speaking about his other book the former treaties the former writing to Theophilus right also Luke addresses Theophilus using O Theophilus and most excellent Theophilus okay and the consensus is that Theophilus is a person of rank or stature most likely he's a believer within the high ranks or he's someone who for an example is control over a city or a government either way Luke is writing to the same person in both the book of Luke and the book of Acts okay which points back to the same author and in this case, it's the physician Luke. He was a doctor. Also, there's another reason why theologians think that Luke wrote both uh, Luke and Acts. It's how Luke uses the word we, W-E, when describing Paul's journeys and his actions. When speaking about Paul's activities, the author says, we did this, we went here next, and so on, indicating that whoever this author is, he was also traveling with Paul. And we know that Luke did indeed travel alongside Paul. So now we look at when this book of Acts was written. Looking at the chrono chrono chronology of when the New Testament books were written, the book of Acts was written approximately 15 years after Paul's journeys throughout Galatia and Asia, 
Macedonia, Greece, Cyprus, all the locations of all the assemblies that Paul established. Now, Paul started his, his major journeys from Damascus to Arabia, back to Damascus, then to Jerusalem, through Syria, up to Antioch, back down to Jerusalem, up to Tarsus. Then around 48 AD, he starts heading west, northwest, right? He travels throughout Galatia, Asia, Macedonia, Greece, dozens of islands throughout the Mediterranean Sea, and eventually, at the end of Paul's journeys, he ends up in Rome in the late 60s. So, or the middle 60s, rather. And, and the book of Acts records Paul's complete ministry over 30 plus years of everything that Paul did. It's a complete overview of Paul's life in Christ Jesus. It's the big picture of Paul, if you will. Then after the book of Acts, we see Paul's books, Romans through Philemon, 13 books. And in those books, we see more specific, more detailed accounts of Paul's actions within those assemblies that he established, both Jews and Gentiles, right from the beginning, as we're going to see when we do this study, especially in Acts chapter 13. Acts chapter 13 is a very important chapter in the book of Acts. So you see, if, if you can get a good grasp on the book of Acts, then you can see exactly what Paul's journeys consisted of. The people he preached to, the countries and cities that he went to, all the activities that our Apostle Paul takes place in in the book of Acts. Unfortunately, many teachers, many preachers never get involved with the book of Acts. And, and they just go around, they tell people that Acts is the most complicated book in the Bible, along with Revelation. Well, it may be complicating for them because it's not complicating when you rightly divide scripture and you take into account there's two different dispensations taking place in the book of Acts. It's a transitional book. It shows the transition between the beginning from Peter and the apostles, the kingdom gospel, and then you see a slow transition over to Paul, the gospel of grace, the dispensation of grace, the mystery, the secret gospel revealed to Paul and Paul alone by Jesus Christ. Okay, so we see the fall of Israel and the rise of the body of Christ, the kingdom to grace prophecy to mystery so with that we'll be starting with our first year after the ascension of jesus leading to the stoning of stephen it's extremely important we understand that period of time from acts 1 to acts 7 is a one-year period it's an extension that god allows to israel to, again to make up their mind okay he's giving them one last chance and what do they do? They blow it by blaspheming the Holy Spirit. And Jesus says, if you blaspheme the Holy Spirit, it will not be forgiven you. Well, what do they do? When the Holy Spirit speaks through the prophet Stephen, they blaspheme the Holy Spirit, they kill Stephen, and that's it. God presses pause. So, then moving to the salvation of Paul, after Acts chapter 7, uh, for those of you in my right division Bible study group, you know that Saul was his Jewish name and Paul was his Gentile Roman name. Jesus never changed his name from Saul to Paul. Okay, I just wanted to interject that. Now, we'll be studying the creation of the body of Christ and all the details in between. So, we need to start with Acts chapter 1 and slowly move over to Acts chapter 28 to completely understand the transition period between Paul and Peter. Jews to Jews and Gentiles, etc. And the most important thing uh, with this upcoming study is that you're going to be able to see who Paul was sent to immediately, both Jews and Gentiles, right from the beginning. Paul did not preach two different Gospels, okay? That is a false teaching. That is a, a, a heresy that is being interjected by the enemy into right division theology, okay? You're going to see this in Acts chapter 13. Read Acts 13 if you have a chance before the next video, and you're going to see who was at the synagogues listening to Paul's message. All right. One mistake people make is that they assume it was only Jews at those synagogues. Well, that may be true today. But back then, synagogues were, were the only place that people could go and listen to any type of teaching whatsoever, whether it be the teaching from Israel, whether it be a teaching from the false gods, whether any type of teaching, there were both Jews and Gentiles there during those times. So these people assume that Paul just was heard by the Jews and no Gentiles were present. That's not true. That's an assumption that leads directly to this false teaching, a hybrid 928 theology, which will confuse a lot of people. Now, knowing the truth, rightly divided, 
prevents that confusion. So it's important that you get a good grasp on the book of Acts before this false teaching comes your way. All right. So hang tight for the next video as we're going to get into this study in the book of Acts. This is a very important study and I highly encourage all of you to take part of this. The puzzle will all come together as we move along through this study. That's a promise that I can make to you. All right. So until then, unto Christ Jesus be all the glory. Lord willing, I will see you on the next video. Acts chapter 1.